All right, so I tell you, there's there's a lot to go over, and I've been I've been focusing. The Lord has me focused on today. Where each of you are today. Now everyone has baggage. Everyone walks in here dealing with something or another. And if you're not dealing with something, just wait. It's coming. Okay? It's coming. But I want to encourage you that things happen in seasons. It will pass. No matter how great the trial may be, it will pass. Those who have fallen into depression and have taken their own lives, it's because they, they, they lost hope. They lost hope. There's no hope. So they make a permanent decision for something that's so temporal. It's temporary. It'll pass. Never, ever count yourself out if you have God in your life. Never. I don't care if it's dark on all sides. I don't care if it's midnight. No way out. Never count yourself out when you have God in your life. There's always hope. Amen? Now, the title of the message today is Show Me Your ID. You know, you get pulled over. <laughs> ID, please. License and registration. Why do they ask for your license? So they know who you are. It's not a trick question, guys. <laughs> I know y'all been pulled over before. I saw some of y'all last night. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> they want to know who you are. Show me your ID. Show me your ID. So I have a couple questions for you. Do you know who you are? Truly. What do you identify as? Do you identify as hmm, an American? Do you identify as Black, African American. Do you identify Hispanic American? And uh, for the police, HMA, Hispanic male adult. BMA, Black male adult. That's what it come in as. They have your name, and then they have that right behind it. So they know who you are. Who are we looking for? Right? Who are you? Do you know who you are? What do you identify as? Conservative, liberal? Are you a conservative Christian, liberal Christian? Whatever you describe yourself as or ID identify yourself as, that's who you are and that's your limit. That's your limit. How do you identify yourself as? Ask yourself that question. Here's a better question. Who do other people identify you as? Who do people, I'll ask this, this is what Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am, right? From all the things that Jesus did, who do people say that I am? And based on what Jesus did, they came up with answers. Isaiah, some say the prophet Elijah. Then he says, who do you say that I am? So who do people say that you are? Who are you? Who do people say that you are? I want you to really ask that question. I'll take a few minutes, a few seconds. We ain't got that kind of time. Ask that question to yourself. Right now, just close your eyes, give you a few seconds, and ask yourself that question. Who do people, my friends, my family, acquaintances, co-workers, who do they say that I am? Ask Ask yourself that question. 
What kind of person are you known as? I will tell you this. There's two main issues, problems in the body of Christ today. One is the church does not know who God is. They think God is some big mystery. They think God is like, you know, rolling the dice. Oh, maybe he'll help me. Maybe he won't. Did you know that every promise from God is yes and amen? Well, God said no. We literally had someone. This is a true story. In our family room. They're on a walker, had a neck brace. Uh, Her husband was a total medical wreck. And, and, and she's sitting there, and we're talking about the healing power of God, the promises of God that we can stand on. And I said this, hey, every promise from God is yes and amen. You know what she said? God said no. <laughs> True story, am I right? God said no. Okay. Today, um, her condition has worsened and her husband has passed away. All because they don't know who God is. They think God is holding out. But when you have faith in God and his word, one and the same, things happen. But you must believe and then act on that belief. Now, it's not sitting there trying to make yourself believe. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. No, that's garbage. I believe, I believe. You can't convince yourself that way. You need to read, study, meditate the word. Let it be imprinted on your heart. And then that carries you through all kinds of trials and tribulations. But you must believe it. You must have faith in God's word. This is how this works. Amen. Okay, get off track. The second thing is we don't know who we are. Church, body of Christ, we don't know who we are. We don't know who God is. We don't know who we are. You think you're supposed to get beat up. Oh, well, you know, God's just trying to teach me something. No, he's not. The way God teaches you is through the apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors. That's how he teaches you. He teaches you through the anointing, the Holy Spirit. This is how God teaches you. It's because of your hard head that you're going through the trial that you're going through. It's because at some point, and this is okay, don't get mad. At one point or another, you made a mistake. You messed up. And so now you may be paying for that. And that's okay. That's fine. But realize it's not God. God's not putting you through anything. Amen? Amen. Those of you who have kids, do you construct obstacles in your kids' lives to teach them something? <laughs> well, I'm going to do this. Well, he's going to learn today. <laughs> no, you don't do that. You advise them. You encourage them. You direct them. And when they go astray, when they don't listen to that advice, that is when they fall in some hard times. You see that? If we know how to love our kids uh, the best we know how, how much more does God, right? So let's stop blaming these things on God and start, don't, don't do this, do this. Right there. It's you. It's you. Okay? Okay, we're going somewhere. Let me get going. Now, you guys cut my time? What is this? Back it up 10 minutes. I'm just kidding. There's an identity crisis amongst the believers. We are not living what we say we believe. We're not living what we say we believe. You call yourself a Christian, but we're not living like it. You know who doesn't have this problem? The world. The world doesn't have this problem. The world doesn't have an identity crisis. You're like, wait a minute, what do you mean? No. You got a dude saying, hey, I'm a girl. And what do they do? 
Dress up like it. Yeah, girls say, hey, no, I'm a, I'm a dude. And what, and what does she do? Dress up like it. You got boys and girls want to be identified as pronouns. I'm them. Yeah, you are them. You got demons. <laughs> yes, you got demons. You are them. You're correcting that. I'm them. They. It's gotten to the point where we as the church are supposed to hate the sin, love the person, right? But they make it impossible because once you talk about the sin, that's who they identify as. They identify as the sin now. You're offending me. I'm offended. No, 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 no. I love you. I'm talking about the sin. No, no, no. I'm offended. You're talking against me. I'm offended. They're owning it. They're owning their ID. And where are we as Christians? Bickering amongst ourselves? Can't get along? You got this Christian talking about this Christian? Oh, that, that's not right. This is this and that's this. And there's all kinds of division. There's all kinds of division. You're disrespecting your pastors. You disrespect one another. How are we supposed to be identified? By what? Love. Our love. We're supposed to be identified by our love. Are you? Can the world identify you as belonging to God, like we can identify them as belonging to the world, right? You can see these people. You ever been on New York subway? My goodness. My goodness. You say, oh, I don't you my post a judge. I'm judging. <laughs> <laughs> I'm judging. When you see a man in a Speedo with nothing else on on the subway, something ain't right. And high heel platforms, something's not right. Well, that's the style today. Okay. Okay. Something ain't right. You can't follow the world and what they do. But can we be identified as we can identify the world? Can we? Are we? Are we identified as love, people of God? Answer that question for me. What do you think? Yes. Yeah? Is that a hopeful, wishful thing? I'm talking about as a group, as a whole. Christians. Absolutely not. We put our Sunday smiles on. Oh, God bless you. How are y'all? Hey, girl. <laughs> oh, how are you? Oh, girl, I'm blessed and highly favored. The devil's a lie. God is on the throne. Ooh. You go out of here cussing people out. You go out of here cussing people out. Mumbling under your breath. Being critical. It should not be so, church. We need to be there for one another. Last week, Brother Bill Horn said, uh, talked about the corporate anointing. Do you know the devil is afraid of the corporate anointing? I can show you over where Nimrod, God said about Nimrod, hey, let's go ahead and confuse these people's language. Not just their speech, but the idea. There's more than one way to skin a cat, basically. So you want to build something? They're all on one accord. He says, no, nah, we, we need to break that up. So whoever does not have the spirit of God upon them, they should be double-minded. Listen to this. God made it so if you did not have, if you do not have the spirit of God on you, then you should be double-minded. We get that? So if we do have the spirit of God, who's the head of the church? Jesus is the head of the church. Is he bipolar? No. no. There's a singular way that the assembly church, we do something. And what way is that? What, what, what is that supposed to be? What way is that? The assembly church. Huh? How do we? Led by who? Me. By pastor. Don't get all religious now. 
The church has shepherds, right? Me. If you're sitting there and you're saying, and I, I tell you something, I give you direction, and you're like, no, no, I believe the Spirit is telling me this. You're out of line. You are out of line. Completely out of line. If you feel, feel, that there's another direction, then what's your job? What's your responsibility? Pray. Keep your mouth shut and pray. Amen. But we should always walk in love. We should always be a people of order. Everything done, Paul said, in decency and in order, yeah. right? I get my instructions from God, Holy Spirit. I get my instructions from him. Amen? Amen. This is how things are done. I'm going somewhere with this. If you do not have the Spirit of God on your life, now you're double-minded. Remember what it says in James? What does it say in James about being double-minded? He said, let that man not even think he'll receive anything from God. You're double-minded. But when we get together as one, on one accord, we're unstoppable. But we need to get there. Stop going off what you think. I tell you, there's people that I'll give directions to and they can't stop talking back. They can't stop saying this and saying, just listen. Just listen. We're trying to go somewhere. This is not it. <laughs> this isn't it. <laughs> this isn't it, guys. I mean, you here, the body, the assembly right here. We're embarking on something awesome. There is a project outside of this body that we're going after, that we're to accomplish. It's huge. It's very huge. But it's not me. I don't pick and choose who's a part and who's not. That's not how it works. How it works is you show yourself faithful. You be faithful. Promotion comes from what? Above. Above. That's God. That's his business. We need to be readily identifiable just as much as the world is. You, you can spot someone who's, uh, it's most likely that person is not a Christian, right? You can see that, right? Yes. Yes. Am, I, am I being mean? Am I being rude? No, you can pretty much see, okay, that, probably, that guy's probably not a Christian. Amen? Amen. So church, we must step it up. How, how do we, what are the steps on how to be identified as God's, God's people? Going around judging and criticizing? No, not at all. So here it is, first step. Number one, love God openly and outwardly. Love God openly and outwardly. So repeat after me. Love God, Love God. Openly, openly and outwardly. And outwardly. There you go. Matthew 10, verse 32, the New Living Translation. It should be on your screens. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth will also acknowledge, well, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone, listen to this, who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Now, let's, let's pause right there. We may not be denying God, but what we say. But we're denying him by what we don't say and what we're not doing. You see that? You, 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 are you seeing that? We need to be identifiable as gods, as, that we belong to God, right? You don't have to outwardly deny God in order to deny God. You just simply got to live your own selfish life. You just have to live a life thinking about you. You know, that's the opposite of love. Love in the King James Version is, is described as charity. Charity. I mean, doing for others. 
So how do you deny God? By simply living a selfish life. Not necessarily by what you say. You guys hear me on that? Now, 90%, 95% of our church serves. That's good. So I'll take it a step further. Do you do it willingly? It's just be willing, willing and obedient. Do you do it willingly? Or do you do it grudgingly? Only you can ask that question. Amen? Okay. Are we bold enough to stand up for God? Courageously, or do we duck it? We duck our heads. Uh, do we mind our own business? Say, oh, I don't want any trouble. So I was. Um, you guys know that I am uh, on an advisory committee for uh, Sheriff Bianco, and I was doing a ride with one of the deputies, and there was this guy who was suicidal, um, on heroin, um, bipolar. And, you know, acting kind of weird. And in, in time of those situations, I just start praying in the spirit. You never know what they're going to do. Um, uh, the two deputies that was, that was there, the guy tried to go inside and slam the door on them. And he told them, they were in the backyard. He says, you go around. And I'm thinking, this guy, I'm all, so I turned to the, the, the dad. And I said, hey, do you have any guns, any weapons in the house? And he goes, uh, Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, but it, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I do. It's in, it's in my room, though. And then the other deputy says, well, is it locked up? <laughs> like, like, fool, like, is it locked up? And, you know, this, uh, this guy was so, uh, I guess he was retired. Yeah, I used to be a police officer, this and that. He's so bent on giving his story. With, Dude, your son's in there acting crazy, and you sitting here trying to brag, telling you retired this and retired that. We don't care. Dude, where's your gun? Can he, does he have access to it? You know, so we're, so I'm, I'm just, I'm praying in the spirit and everything. And I, and I saw that, okay, the guy was disturbed, but he was disturbed at one of the deputies specifically. And we were taking him to a 5150. We take him to a, a hospital. And I, I go up to him, like he's getting his stuff, whatever. I go up to him and I just grab his wrist. And I'm praying in the spirit and I said, I'm going to be praying for you, Jonathan. I'm going to pray for you. He kind of just looks at me. The mom starts kind of with tears. And uh, he's all, thank you. Thank you. They go to get him, get him, um, get him out of there. The deputy called uh, later and says, um, uh, say, who, who's the guy in all green? Because they wear tan and then green. And I have all green on. Who's the guy that was in, in, in green? Um, I said, oh, that's just one of our guys um, with the department. And could you tell him I said thank you? I could tell he really meant it that he was going to pray for him. Could you just tell him that? Can you let him know that? Now I could have, you know, done all that, or I could have. I don't want to trouble. That's none of my business. <laughs> you know, I hate to break it to you, but first to make this question. Who here has received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior? Raise your hand up high. Okay. Everyone. We good? Okay. All right. I'm all, oh, okay. The Lord rebuke. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but you're the first responders. You are. Yeah, we need the police, fire, paramedics. But you are the first responders. You have to know the power that's inside you weighs. It makes a difference. When you hear an ambulance, a siren, you should automatically start praying in the spirit. Start praying for the person. You might not know what the issue or problem is, but start praying. Start praying. It's time for us to be identified as people of God. Come on. If you don't do it, who will? You wait for next church over there, all so-and-so to do it? No. You do it. You hear a siren, start praying. You are the first responders. Your angels can get there way faster than that ambulance can. 
and knock that problem out. Amen? Amen, Amen church? Amen. This is who we are. We are the body of Christ. We control things, not the devil. We do. Amen? Amen. Come on. I need to hear something now. I need, I need some audible encouragement or something. Okay. If you have the thought of, ah, that's not my problem. Ah, I don't want any trouble. Guess what? You're not fit for the kingdom. I'm trying to encourage you, inspire you to be the person to say, yes, yes, yes. But to be honest with you, if you don't have that mentality, you're not fit for the kingdom. Well, pastor, I dare you say that. Okay, well, let's read it. <laughs> I mean, don't shoot the messenger. Let's look at verse 34. Don't even think. Don't even think that I have came. I came to bring peace. I didn't come to bring peace. This is Jesus talking. Don't even think that I've come to bring peace. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. Listen to this. I have come to set man against father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. Why is he saying this? Because you've got to choose. You must make a choice. You have to choose. If your husband isn't serving, oh well. Don't go to hell with him. If your wife isn't serving the Lord. Don't go to hell for her. God must be first. He said, I couldn't set you. You must make a choice. You have to. If you love your father or, more, or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Oh my goodness. Chi, if you love grace more than God, you ain't worthy. Grace, if you don't love those two right there, your two beautiful daughters, you better love him more, right? That's what it's saying. How many guys, like, like ooh, you got to kind of have an issue with that. And doesn't that hit you kind of, this is how serious it is. This is Jesus talking. You are not worthy of being mine. Next verse, verse 38. If you refuse to take up your cross, that's what that is, take up your cross, and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. I can't tell you how many uh, times it's, there's family ties, family ties, family ties. Ooh, blood is sticking in water, whatever. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We need to wrap our minds of who we are. This is who we are called to be. Amen? Amen? Okay. Let's go on. Number two. Love one another sincerely. Sincerely. <laughs> love one another. What does that look like? John 13, 35, New Living Translation says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. It'll prove that you're my disciples. Your love for one another. Well, Lord, I serve in church. I didn't say that. I said love one another. But Lord, I love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yeah, and love one another. Not just casually, sincerely. Sincerely love one another. How many of you guys have, have an issue with that? No? You guys good? Can you guys love one another sincerely? I should be able to see it. I should be able to see the love. Hey, hey, hey. And not just, not just when it's convenient. That's the issue with the body today. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's not out of my way. I can do that. First Peter chapter one, verse 22. Now, because of your obedience to the truth, you have purified your very souls 
And this empowers you to be full of love for your fellow believers. So express this sincere love toward one another passionately and with a pure heart. This means go out of your way to love on your brothers and sisters. Can you go out of your way to do that? Honestly, can we please go out of our way? Some of you guys like to just stay home, not do anything. There's a few people like that. But come out to the events. Come out. And you guys do. That's an example. Thank you. Thank you. For getting out of yourself and being a part of the body of Christ. That's a novel idea, right? Coming out and being a part. Encourage one another, sharpen one another. Don't just hang out with your little clique of friends or family. You got your clique, got your clique, got your little clique over here. Who's else talking to us about cliques? Like, I don't want this to be a church of cliques. No. It's not a church of cliques. Everybody should be fellowshipping with one another, sharpening one another, encouraging one another. Not cliques. Right? Not cliques. I know y'all want to be in my clique. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But we need to go out of our way, loving one another. Loving someone when it's convenient. <laughs> the world does that, right? Is that extraordinary love? Is that love that, 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 that shines or shows out? No. Right? I see the world taking care of the world all the time. They just love one another. It's convenient. But go out of your way to do it. Now, now you're talking. What kind of love must we display to show to the world that we belong to God? What is that? What kind of love is that? Anybody got any? I, that's a real question. What kind of love? Agape. Yeah, it's agape love, but give me a practical example of us. You know what? That guy must belong to God. That guy is constantly doing. It's not just a one, one-time act either. You know, that guy is constantly doing something. You know what? Nick. Nick is constantly doing things. Now, he's disgruntled and all that stuff. We all know that. <laughs> but, but, you know, he's, he's disgruntled. He, he's the one that walk in and, you know. But anyway, uh, but, but no, no, no. He's always doing something. He's always giving. Time, money, serving. At the DAV. What does it stand for? Disabled American Vets. Disabled American Vets. And they give out food and things. And this is his sergeant right here. Sergeant, what's your name? Well, I forget your name. What's your name? Renee. Renee. Okay. So constantly giving. You understand what I'm saying? You might have issues and that kind of thing here and there, whatever. But you can't say that's not a man that serves. For Kenneth Copeland. He's serving. He's serving. He's going to tell you what he don't like, but he's serving. No, for real. He's serving. He's giving of his time. He puts his money where his mouth is. Right? Mowing your neighbor's grass. Okay. Mowing your neighbor's grass. Man, that grass is a wreck. Well, don't sit there and talk about it with your other neighbors. <laughs> Edge that sucker. Take the weed whacker too, you know? Mow your neighbor's grass, not just, oh, I'm going to do it once every quarter so it gets all high again. No, mow. That's something everybody can do, <laughs> right? How do we show love? How do we show that we belong to him? Bring in their trash cans, right? They might work late. It's windy. you just watching the trash cans roll down the street. You're like, man, sucks for them. Go get that trash can and bring it in. I, think I was on my way somewhere. Um, it was when it was windy, um, you know, six months or so ago. And I was driving, uh, about to turn out of my complex, and there's a trash can in the middle of the street. And I'm like, man, I could have rolled by just like everybody else did. Well, I stopped, put my car in park, got this big old trash can. You know, it ain't the little, you know, little round ones like you used to have. 
It's this big old giant green one. And I picked it up, dragged it to that person's house. I mean, and it was down the street. I'm not doing it for somebody to look at me to give me praise. Or, no, just put it there. He never knew I did that. He never knew he almost lost a trash can. He never knew. But it's not about others per se. It's about who you are. Who are you? When you lay your head down at night, what conscience are you going to sleep with? Are you going to sleep with, you know, I belong to God. I'm his. No matter what anybody else does or says, they cannot be appreciative. They can say, get out, get out of here, you beep. It's not about that. It's not about that at all. It's about who you are. That guy wasn't even appreciative. Oh, so what? Do it again. He would look at all his women like, man, he's doing it again? I cussed that dude out last week. Be consistent in your love. What can we do? Ask yourself, what can I do? I'll give you a couple more examples. How about volunteering your time at the senior community center? There's elderly people. Read a book to them. It ain't got to be the Bible. Go to all religious. Read Cat in the Hat. You know what I'm saying? It ain't got to be all religious. I'm going to read to you. For the church of Laodicea. No, come on now. You ain't got to do any of that. Just say, you know, green eggs and ham. Spend time with them. Love on them. And of course, pray for one another. Now, that seems like, oh yeah, of course. Now don't raise your hand, but how many of you honestly pray for your brother or sister? Specifically. Because everyone here, like I said, they're going through something. When you sit down and I with the Holy Spirit, who puts the one on your heart? Hey, um, Chi, pray for Dalen. His shoes are whack. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, I was just kidding. She, likes, she actually likes your style. That's why. Um, but the Lord will put someone on your heart and pray for them specifically. They'll be like, oh, Lord, I pray for the congregation of the seven church. Blah, 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 blah. Raymond needs prayer. Stand up. Watch. Show him. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm messing with y'all. I apologize. <laughs> show him. Show, show, show him you need help. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, stop. I apologize. I'm kidding. But pray for one another, saints. Honestly, pray for one another. <laughs> I love Raymond. He's cool. You know, Raymond's a really good mechanic. He's, he's uh, got Kalel out of some binds, boy, I tell you. It's always something with that truck. <laughs> you go out in the morning, it's like just liquid everywhere. Oil and water. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Did I skip number... How many points did I give you? Two. Oh, okay. Two. Number three. Forgive one another. Repeatedly. Forgive one another. It's not for the person. It's for you. You can't walk around with a bitter heart and expect to be an agent or a vessel for God, which is love. You cannot be an agent for God, an ambassador a vessel being used by him who is love and have bitterness in your heart. It's impossible. God cannot connect with you on that level. You can't have bitterness in your heart. The hard times that you're going through, don't let it make you bitter. Take a drive. You know, that's what I used to do all the time. Just take long drives, especially at night. Nobody on the road, you know, because that could be stressful, you know, with traffic. You go from the frying pan to the fire. So you stress, whatever, you drive yourself in traffic, you be like, you son of a... Um, <laughs> you want to you wanna go, <laughs> there's no traffic. Take a long drive, right? Put the windows down, AC on, whatever it is, just, and just be alone with your thoughts and just pray. Rub your woosah, you know, just relax. But don't get a bitter heart. Do not let the circumstances and situations that you may be going through change your heart. Don't get bitter. Say, I will not not get bitter. bitter. Don't get bitter. Control who you are. That's the only thing you do have control over. 
You have no control over anybody else. You don't have control of your neighbors. You don't have control of your siblings, right? They said a brother is born for adversity. Me and my brother were adversity like crazy. Just conflict, conflict. Don't let it change you. Let it grow you. Let it grow you. Amen? Don't change. Have a heart full of love, forgiveness. Let me go through a few scriptures. No, just one. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Lay aside bitter words, temper tantrums, revenge. Man, you know, I was a very vengeful person. I used to be a very vengeful person. Like, I will win. No matter what, I'll win. I'm going to win. Until that's the kind of person I used to be. I don't care how this maybe this specific exchange happens or not. Watch your back. <laughs> I was that way. I'm going to win. I will be the last man standing. I live my life that way. I truly did. Nick knows some things, too, about that. I'm picking on Nick today, too. He knows some things. Right? People just running their mouth a little too much. Hey, I'm not mad. Didn't I tell you to stop? <laughs> Didn't I say I don't want to hear from you anymore? Okay, click. And I handled it. That's the kind of person I used to be. Used to be. <laughs> Revenge, profanity, and insults. Profanity and insults never was really my thing. That doesn't do anything. It just makes you look ugly. Be, uh, what is it? But instead, be kind and affectionate toward one another. Kind and affectionate. You know, affectionate, that's, that's an action word. You guys know that? You know love is an action word? Don't just think it. Don't just desire to do it. Actually do it. How many guys promise I'm going to put my kindness and affectionate into action? My affection. I'm put my affection on. Raise your hand high if you promise to do that. I'm going to hold you accountable to it. Look at Cindy acting like she's busy. Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, nope, no. Nope. She's like, I ain't doing nothing. Uh, <laughs> We must stop taking offense. Stop taking offense. Stop taking offense. Stop taking offense. Oh, there she is. There she is. <laughs> we must stop taking offense. There's ample opportunity for you to take offense. Stop. I will not take offense. Oh, I want to slap him, but I won't. I've changed my heart. Lord, I look to you. Don't take offense. Everybody say this. I will not, I will not take, offense, take offense, but I will, but I will walk, in love walk in love and forgiveness. And forgiveness. Okay? Now, in Matthew 18... We don't have to turn there, but in Matthew 18, Peter approached Jesus. That's Matthew 18, 21 and 22. And it says, hey, Jesus, got a question for you. I'm trying to be slick. How many times do I forgive my fellow believer who keeps offending me? Seven times? You know, trying to be slick, right? Seven times. But Jesus said, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. 70 times seven. You know, when you add that up, that's, you, that means forgiving them every minute of the day, plus one. That means that person has to offend you every minute. Every 60 seconds, that person's offending you. At some point, you should probably walk away. But... <laughs> But that person's offending you every minute of the day. You forgive them. Plus one. You guys see that? Okay, number four. Here we go. We're getting to the end. Trust the Holy Spirit fully. You want to be identified as a person that belongs to God? Learn to trust the Holy Spirit. In fact, 
We as believers, I truly believe, do not trust the Holy Spirit. I think most of us don't trust the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you're trying to do his job. You're trying to do the Holy Spirit's job. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have this gimmick, this type of show. Oh, to bring people in. Oh, I want to bring people to Christ. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Who draws in a person to the Lord? The Holy Spirit does. You just listen and obey. Stop coming up with your gimmicks. Oh, if I do this and do this and I juggle, they love that. They're bringing people to God. Who are you? Why are you trying to play the Holy Spirit? He promises that he'll draw them in. All you got to do is pray. Pray for that person. Walk in love. When you walk in love and then you have words to say to this person, it'll mean something. If you ain't walking in love and you say something, they can care less. Walk in love. Now, it's not your job to just, you know, walk on eggshells and tap dance for that person. No, that's their own person's fault. They want to be bitter, ugly, and nasty. Let them be bitter, ugly, and nasty. When they stand before God, they'll answer for it. But you do what God's called you to do. You do what God's called you to do. We love on one another. Trust the Holy Spirit. If you pray for the Lord to send laborers across their path and to bring them into the fold, the Holy Spirit is just. He will do it. But on the same token, there's somebody somewhere else praying for laborers to come across someone's path. You're that laborer. Answer me this question. Do you want laborers to come across your loved one's path that resembles you? Some say yes, some say no. You guys understood the question, right? Yeah. You guys are like, uh, <laughs> what do you say? We as believers tend to compromise what we do in the name of reaching people. We go places we shouldn't be. We change how we talk, how we speak. All of a sudden, you got a little slang, you know, or something, trying to fit in. Don't respect people that much to change who you are. You are a child of God. You don't change who you are for those people. You might have a drink with someone. They're drinking, you're like, oh, you know, I don't want to be, you know, left out, so I'll just take a little drink. Or I'll order a drink, and I just, you know, I'll take one sip and just leave it there so I could fit in. Smoking. The way you may dress. And you tell yourself that it's all because you want to relate to that person. God doesn't need you to do that. He needs you to listen and obey. Amen? We just need to trust God. Ephesians 3.20, and I have one more, and then we're done. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Amen? Amen. It's time for the church to take eternity more serious in the world. Are you guys with me with this? It's, you guys with me, right? Yeah. We all want to be identifiable to God. We want God to say, that's mine. Yeah. Like the song, the song that we sung, spoken for. We want God to stand up and say, that's mine. He's spoken for. When the devil comes around with whatever it may be, no, 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 no. He's mine. She's mine. He, she, they're spoken for. They belong to me. I want God to be able to say that. I want the angels to stop the demonic forces. Nope. This person belongs to God. This person belongs to Elohim. You got the devil back there. He don't act like it. <laughs> Look at his attitude. 
We don't want that, right? Come on, put a smile on your face. We said that in our Bible study. Smile. Put a smile on your face. Is God on the throne? Just smile. We are not a people without hope. Smile, saints. It's time for us to proclaim or what we proclaim inside the walls of the church must become our identity outside the walls of the church. What we say in here must be practiced out there. It's time. It's time. Everybody should be taking notes. Last point and we're done. Finally, flow in the anointing. Flow in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Everyone here is anointed. Everyone here says that they're saved. Flow in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Flow. When your anointing's at work, his anointing's at work, hers anointing's at work, we come together, man, we're unstoppable. But the world can't be more attractive than God. We just got to stop selling out. 1 John 2.27, Amplified says, As for you, the anointing, the special gift, the preparation, which you receive from him, remains permanently in you. Permanently in you. You're anointed. And it is permanently in you. And you have no need for anyone to teach you. But just as his anointing teaches you, giving you the insight through the presence of the Holy Spirit about all things, and is true and is not a lie. And just as his anointing has taught you, you must remain in him, being rooted in him, knit to him. That was 1 John 2.27, Amplified. Once you receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you must learn how to operate in the Holy Spirit. Trust the Holy Spirit. This is what separates us from everyone else. There is the anointing, which is an empowerment from God to accomplish and do what he's called us to do. This is different from the blessing. It's the anointing. No other religion even claims to have this. You know that? The anointing. Everyone in here is anointed. You just need to learn about it. Learn how to operate in it. Amen? This is how we are identified as children, people, sons of God. This is how. You were created for a purpose. You were created for a specific purpose. Not just a man. No, you're created for a purpose. It doesn't matter how young or old you are. Find out what that purpose is. And you'll see that you're unstoppable. But you must love God. You must love others. Love God and love others. That's key. That's the whole motivation behind it. Amen? And remember, Jesus is Lord.